Hey, it's Forrest KI7QCF. This will be a brief video on the top five QRP radios you can still buy today. There's a lot of great QRP radios out there, many of which are no longer in production, but can be found on the secondhand market. Many of my radios that I activate with frequently are radios that I found on eBay or found through a friend. So for this video, I'm just gonna include radios that you could go buy today. And all of these are linked in the description. I will put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. It'll probably be the least scientific video ever on these radios. I'm not gonna give full descriptions and breakdowns. I'm just gonna talk about them from my perspective and what I understand about the radios, and more importantly, what my field use uh, experience has been with them. I'm also going to link for each of these videos at least one activation video. So if you wanna click into a specific video where it's just the radio on the air, that's all linked in, in the description. So we're gonna work uh, from my left to right. I think that'll be your right. The radio that I recommend most often to brand new operators or people on a budget is the QRP Labs QMX. Now the QMX is a radio that is assembled or sent to you as a kit. This is actually a kit that I built. This is the mid-band version. And this radio covers, I believe, 60 meters to 15 meters. So primarily I'm using this radio for the 40, 30, 20, 17 and 15 meter bands and uh, I'll tell you what as a brand new builder I actually found that this radio wasn't terribly difficult to assemble some people act like it's the hardest thing in the world to build But I will say as a new builder I was able to do it You do have to pay attention to detail, but if you want to get a radio soon uh, It's gonna take you a while to get one assembled if you buy this as a kit I believe you'll get it in a couple weeks and uh, I built this one in one day now that was after having an experience of building another one so I think in a couple days you could easily build a QMX and the things that I would highlight about this radio, obviously all of these radios do 5 watts, the exception is the Elecraft KX2 does 10, but these are all 5 watt QRP radios. The thing that stands out to me about this guy is um, specifically really fantastic receiver and one of the most pleasant side tones. As somebody that produces hundreds of videos of CW content, people tend to really like the QRP lab stuff, whether it's my QMX, a QCX, or I built a QMX Plus. They have really nice, enjoyable side tone. My big takeaway with this radio though, and I'll talk about it with some of these other ones, is it's very feature packed, it's very robust. You can actually do single sideband on this radio. I believe you could also do digital, somebody could correct me there. Um, but it has a lot of functionality, more than some of the other radios in its price range or just a little bit priced higher. This thing is, is pretty amazing. I do think Hans with QRP Labs is a genius. He does a great job with his builds, uh, with, his, with his designs, his radios. And yeah, for a little over 100 bucks, this is a fantastic radio. It's lightweight, it's perfect for POTA or SOTA applications. The knock on this radio is a couple things. Very power sensitive, um, very SWR sensitive in a good way. It has protections in place that will protect your build, that your investment. But this is one of the quirkiest radios where it's pretty easy to uh, screw up a menu or screw up a setting. Like if I'm calling CQ with the memory, um, and it's not just me, I've seen other videos, I won't say who, where people, you'll click out of your memory message and it'll like take you off frequency. So this has one of the quirkier menu settings, but it's nothing, even Elecraft is, is quite a bit more challenging or even the MTR-3B or MTR-4Bs out there. It's, it's not the end of the world, but that's something to be aware of, of this radio. Kind of as a segue, jumping into the KM4 CFT, my good buddy Jonathan Kane. This is the CFT-1, available, assembled, or as a kit. Forgive me, yeah, assembled or as a kit. And these are actually the only two radios on this table that are kit option. The other three come assembled uh, if you're in the US. Now, the CFT-1 is the antithesis of the QRP Labs QMX in that it has the most basic, simple menu. If you had a little bit more money to spend, I would actually recommend this radio over the QRP Labs QMX for a few reasons. Um, I actually, I haven't done any scientific testing, but I believe this radio has a better receiver. In fact, I think this receiver can go toe to toe with any radio on the market in the QRP world. Fantastic, quiet receiver. And uh, my favorite quote from Jonathan Cain ever was if you need a user manual in order to, uh, build, to be able to use this radio, he says he would need to go back to the drawing board with the user interface. His, his commitment with the user interface was nobody would ever have to read a manual in order to be able to operate this, which couldn't be further from the truth for like an Elecraft or even the LNR Precision. This is a incredibly simple radio. And I gotta tell you guys, in the world of feature and functionality and product development, 
there's something just beautiful about the simplicity of this radio. Um, the only thing I would say, if I did give it a knock, compare it to like the MTR3B or the QRP Labs QMX, is it's just a little bit wider. It's a bit thicker, but it's still uh, a very, very small portable radio. Now, going on to the LNR Precision, something you're gonna find with this radio, one, aesthetically, it might be the most beautiful. I really love this design on it. Um, it's also my lightest. It's actually, these are all kind of in the same ballpark as far as size and weight, but the LNR Precision is the lightest QRP rig I think ever invented. Um, there's probably some monoband, small projects out there. I've got some uh, rock mites and Altoid stins that maybe they're lighter, but as far as the functionality, which is actually quite impressive, this radio is extremely lightweight. Um, it's a very concise package. It's very, very impressive. Now, forgive me, on the KM4 CFT, the CFT1, this has a similar band plan as my mid-band QMX. I believe this does 15, 17, 15, uh, so sorry, 15, 17, 20, and 30, and 40. I think that's correct. It just does kind of that mid-band. This will just do 40, 20, and 15. And the funny thing about 15 meters on this QRP Labs, I don't know what it is, but every time I activate 15 meters on this, I always get DX. I don't know why. I think it's just a coincidence, but this has a really, really good, um, I don't know if it get more, gets more power out on 15 meters or what, but this is a good little DX radio for me. I don't know why, but it just always is. I'll link a, DX, a few DX videos of this if you don't believe me. But the thing that I love about the, the Kurahi, the MTR3B, is the built-in paddles, these touch paddles are actually a really cool functionality. None of my other radios have this. Obviously this has a plug-in paddle. You can plug in paddles on any of these, but built-in touch paddles, I have videos, they're linked in the description of me using these. They actually work quite well. Um, the LCD screen, uh, LED screen is really, really nice. And it does have adjustable volume for your side tone volume. I crank mine all the way up. I never want it below the top um, volume on it. The knock on this radio would be uh, no adjustable side tone frequency. You can actually send it to them and they'll adjust your side tone frequency as far as what the CW sounds like. Um, but other than that, I think it actually has a wide power acceptance as far as 12 volts or 9 volts, as does the uh, CFT1. The QRP definitely does not. And then these two guys are, I think they're 13.8 or, or 12 volt works with these. Um, Again, not, not a very scientific video, just sharing my general thoughts and impressions on this, but I like the Kurihi quite a bit. It's obviously just the three band, but very lightweight, very, very concise. Now, going on to these two radios, these are now in a league of their own as far as overall functionality use case. They're astronomically more money. Um, so we kind of tapped out about $350 here, maybe 150 if you get the enclosure and if you want it assembled. Uh, going on to the QRP, uh, Elecraft offering the KH1 unapologetically. This is my favorite radio of all time. I'm romantic about it. Um, I've got it stripped down right here, but if you don't know, this has a built-in tuner. Both of these do. Neither of these have built-in tuners. None of these. Um, you'll have to use an external tuner or resonant antenna. Um, so built-in tuners. Uh, the band, this is an all-band radio. We'll talk about this in a second. But this with just the telescopic whip is going to give you 15 meters, 17 meters, as well as 20 meters. But you have additional uh, bands you can use. Like if you get a 40 meter coil, you can do 40 meters on this. Um, I've used NFET half wave antennas with this. Again, activation is linked in the, in the description. But the reason I love the Elecraft KH1 is because of the use case of, it's, it just wants to go everywhere with you. It's a radio that truly fits in your pocket and is fully deployable. It is the only radio out of all of these that in its own package is ready to get on the air. And I've been pushing my son down the street in a stroller uh, rag chewing with Japan on this. I've sat in my backyard and I've worked Stewart M0 TTQ uh, sitting on my butt in my grass off the whip. Uh, that's the UK from Utah. It's an amazing radio in the fact that it just deploys and it's ready to go. So if you're passionate about CW, if you're passionate about uh, field operations, I believe um, the, uh, the the creator at Elecraft can't believe his name's evading me. I know his name off the top of my head always. Wayne Burdick, there it is. Um, he says it's opportunistic HF adventure, and this was a passion project of his. And I believe people that truly love radio, people that truly love CW, will have an emotional connection with this radio just as I have. And uh, man, I just I just absolutely love it. Is it the best radio to go activate out in the field? Uh, yeah, it does well, but some of these are more kind of your, your station radios. This is like, 
just wants to go in your pocket and go with you and maybe you're with your family at Thanksgiving and you step outside and say, hey, everybody, check this out. That's what this is for. Okay, now this is my this is my favorite radio for, for operations as far as activating. Uh, this radio came with me on probably 13 summits in the year of 2025. It came with me uh, to Finland, came with me to Jamaica, came with me to Japan. In fact, this was the only radio I used in Japan. I did have my KH1 there as well, but this, this radio, if I had to tell you, if money's no issue and you're like, Forrest, what's one radio I can get that I'm gonna just fall in love with it and it's gonna be killer for me, Poda Soda? KX2, baby, hands down. Uh, and this is gonna sound really silly and I know the math guys are gonna kill me. The KX2 does 10 watts. That's twice as powerful as the rest of these radios. Well, Forrest, five extra watts only does this on the S meter. Don't care. Uh, I have hundreds upon hundreds of field, uh, my own field uh, applications of testing and experience. I notice it. I notice 10 watts. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know how. I wasn't top of my class in math. You will notice a difference with more power. And uh, man, just just the fact that this has the built-in tuner, um, it's all band. I, you know, even if I bring an Elecraft AX3, which isn't a great antenna, it's just a vertical that deploys. I have six bands with this guy, and that was huge for me when I was in Tokyo activating band hopping. Um, I can't even get into all the features and everything that this radio has. It's just, if, if money is no issue, um, this radio is, is just fantastic. Um, again, all band, built-in tuner. It has additional functionality, obviously can do sideband, can do digital. There's a digi rig you can buy if you'd like to do digital. But uh, there's APF filtering, just the CW. Th these radios were built, Elecraft built these for CW and they're fantastic CW radios. The built-in uh, speaker is fantastic. All of these, uh, even this guy, I really got a pair with external speakers. This one now kicks the crap out of the KX3. Don't ask me why, but the KX2 speaker is astronomically better than the KX3. A lot of filtering, a lot of, lot of settings, a lot of capabilities within this radio. Um, again, that's the least scientific review ever. Uh, I, I think, you know, I'm ordering these a little bit in preference. If I could only recommend one of the uh, small kind of more budget friendly ones. Again, I love the CFT one, but you couldn't go wrong with any of these radios. If you have uh, a little bit more money to spend, the KX2 is my number one recommended radio. But if you uh, are passionate about CW, passionate about radio, I think every man, woman, and child in this, I don't think we should live in a country where every man, woman, and child doesn't have a KH1. Uh, so that's KI7 QCF running in 2028, vote for me. Thanks for coming uh, to the video. I hope I hope you guys liked it. And I think there should be resources in the description if you want to see more content on these specific radios. Very fine business 73 did it.